Are you looking for Forandil right here and trying to get a guide for him? Guess what? We've been playing quite a lot in the PvP recently with Forandil as a flying cavalry hero. So today I've got my full guide finally for Forandil here for you guys since we've finally actually used him enough to actually warrant a guide to give you guys some actual info. So with all that said, let's get into today's full guide on the main boy, the newest flying cavalry hero, Thorindil. Smash a like, comment, and subscribe for more daily videos of me, Mr. Sneaky, and yes, Foreigner, we've got him right here chilling. And basically, we're gonna be going over everything that you're gonna need for this guy because I'm just saying, when you do get him in the village, he did some really adorable pictures here with his actual little bird, um, Z, which he actually basically turns into and he looks after. So it's his little friend here. But what we're gonna be going over, especially, for you guys, as you can imagine, is the skills, all the attributes, all the pairings, everything to do with this hero, because I've actually been using him quite a lot. I'm not gonna lie, I've been using him in Roots of War, I've been using him in PvP, just everywhere you can use him, I've actually been flying all over the place with this hero. So we're gonna go over all of the skills, why honestly this hero is really good, and if you should actually be investing into him, right? Because if you're a low spender, free to play player, you might be wondering, is this guy something I actually want in my arsenal? So let's go over all of his skills first, and then we have a good idea of maybe the right direction for your account. So his first skill here, straight away, the one everyone knows is 1,000 rage cost, for a near actual range, meaning you can actually use him with the ranged Spring Wardens Cavalry. Yes, so you can use him with the obviously melee based cavalry, which everyone has, as well as the Flying Eagles, but you can also use him with the Spring Warden Rage. And that's actually a really good thing, and you'll see why I think this is a really good thing. So when you're looking at this ability, it's a very powerful ability on paper. It's 1200 damage factor, and you apply a brand new debuff in the game. This is Cowardice, and what Cowardice does is basically stop your opponents from dealing any sort of normal attack damage. And I'm not gonna lie, guys, this damage is absolutely insane how much you cut out when you're looking at some of the pvp and some of the numbers when you're watching the pvp side of things you will notice you will be dealing maybe 1200 1200 1200 and guess what cowardice comes on and it cuts it down to 600 or even 500 sometimes depending on the person you are fighting so honestly very powerful cc very powerful skill in the game and honestly one the archers you can imagine absolutely hate because archers love normal attack damage so very powerful skill always max this skill out first as you can see like i've done already five on it then you would star him up to get him into a 5-1-1 stage and then you can start working on him however you want but we are going to go over all of the skills and then i'm actually going to give you my way but i actually think you build him so his second skill is a very powerful skill too. It gives you a flat 10% defense penetration. This is basically a defense mitigation. It just goes through their defensive stats and just hits them harder. So honestly, this is a very, very powerful skill that you get as a cavalry player. It means all of your skills are naturally gonna hit a lot harder if you have this 10% penetration. And it means you can kill so many players, honestly. And it is a very powerful skill in its own right. When we go to the third skill though, this is the one where I think makes the power of him. I'm not gonna lie, this is so much that is jam-packed into this skill. And it might be a bit confusing, but it's honestly a very simple one. Forandil is excellent, as you can imagine at being a flexible style commander because of the third skill. When he's a commander, an actual primary commander, he will always gain that 10% for me, because it's only one, 10% damage, uh, march speed and 4% damage dealt. But when it's maxed out, you get a 20% march speed bonus and a 10% increase in all damage dealt. This is an absurd amount of damage that you can do. But if you're 
foreign nil, maybe isn't as strong as you need him, or maybe he's just there to do some special tactics that I'm going to showcase a little bit later, then you can put him in the deputy slot. And in the deputy slot, you're going to reduce the rage of the skill by 50, meaning you've got a 950 rage requirement on the main primary skill now for whoever you're using, which is very good trying to get a turn earlier in combat. Then it obviously increases the skill damage by 10%. So this skill is pretty simple. Do you want him in primary or do you want him in secondary? Either one you go for, guess what? You're going to get a load of stats. Yes, maybe the ones in the secondary are really good because you're getting the rage reduction and the skill damage increase. But honestly, the 20% march speed and that damage dealt bonus is absolutely key when you're trying to use foreign deal in certain scenarios. So his fourth skill and final skill is a very powerful skill. Again, it's not one I personally think is the best skill. It is up there, but one thing you'll notice, all four skills are good. So this last skill, basically, when you enter combat, you instantly gain 20% extra attack, meaning that unyielding rush trigger that you get generating that 1k rage instantly gets its benefit and guess what you're getting 20% extra attack meaning you can deal more damage with those um, eagles or the cavalry that you're going to be using. Obviously over the base duration you will lose 5% every 20 seconds that's all this reads but guess what if you've got a 40% bonus attack and you're losing 5% every 20 seconds Guys, you're going to be needing to go over a minute to lose at least 15% and you still got more than what you originally had in this base skill. So it's a very good skill again. And when you finally awaken him, which is quite crazy, even though you've got all these stats on this hero, you will also gain the chance when you're dealing normal attacks you can obviously have Caudus on that tr um, unit, which you obviously deal. If that target has Caudus, guess what? You have a 50% chance to defense break them for 20% and inflict a slow of 20%. So on top of all of these stats, all of these amazing different buffs and debuffs that you have in your kit, guess what? You get more. You get more when you awaken him. And, and the thing is, as a cavalry player, I'm going to tell you right now, this is one cavalry hero you're going to want. And the reason why you're going to want this hero is because of future-proofing your account. This hero is so, in my opinion, is really cracked. The fact that he's flying, meaning you can always use him with either ground-based or flying units, which is amazing, especially when you're using Spring Wardens and the Spring Eagles. But on top of this, you've got four skills here that are all insanely good for PvP and none of them are wasted. And then on top, you get a fifth additional passive, which is even more powerful on top of some of these that you have. So I really do think this is one hero that if you are trying to play cavalry, you definitely won. Maybe you are not paying cavalry and you're looking at Forendale and you might be wondering, Mr. Sneaky, should I get this hero? And I'm still gonna say yes, because I honestly think Forendale is the equivalent of almost of saying, and some people might um, understand where I'm gonna come from, a Canara or a Madeline, where these heroes are so good, even as a triple five one commander is so much stats that you're gonna get and abuse on the open field. And again, this is gonna be able in the future when there's more cavalry heroes coming out, guess what? Forando is gonna be one of those guys that everyone's gonna look at and go, ooh, can I put Forando with him? Is that gonna be a really tanky match with this super nasty offensive capability from Forendale. Is that going to work, right? And that's what I think is going to happen. And honestly, right now, when I've been using Forendale, I've been enjoying him. I'll tell you some of the parents I've been running on right now in a moment, but honestly, is this guy worth investing? I would definitely say yes. Definitely, definitely, definitely. He's just honestly so good. He's, he's surprisingly scary good, especially with the pairings. So the first pairing that obviously we can use in the game, and I'm going to just do the basic one straight away that everyone is going to ask about. It is the fear 
and Foreign Del Combo. This is obviously the go-to because, as you can imagine, Fear is an overall-based hero. She also gives you some nice hero skill damage bonus. She gives you some really good shielding, as well as some insanely good tanking stats and attack bonuses. Look at all these stats this hero gets you on top you also gain a stack where it's whenever you gain a shield, you're gonna gain obviously some extra attack, which is honestly surprisingly very good with Forendel's fourth ability because you're gonna instantly go into combat, you're gonna instantly get 20%, then you're gonna get a shield because of the fear, and guess what? You've now just gained, if you've got obviously the better stats, you're gonna gain an extra 10% attack instantly into the fight, but, the old age question, what is the prime rate? Who, who's prime rate? And the honestly answer to that is either. This is the scary thing. I have tried using either of these guys in prime rate and I've had exceptionally good results with both. And the reason why you get good results with both as a quick little hint is the talent pages. My talent page I run right now is this overall page and it's a very defensive page that basically as you can see no um sev wounds is reduced but the movement speed i can get in i can get out it's all about getting in and out in and out as well as obviously increasing your own stats this is a very good build it just makes you very very tanky when you are using fear but when you've got the primary of foreign deal, guess what it just does so much damage. Like it honestly does an insane amount of damage. And you're surprised because this 15% hero skill damage bonus waits until the next rage skill is casted. Meaning it doesn't matter if she is on your secondary slot because you're gonna get in the 1k shield. And while you're waiting for that next rage cycle, this 15% is waiting to actually be hit onto this 1200. So you always are gonna get that damage bonus. It's a very powerful effect to have, right? So you can rock any of them, right? So that's the basic one out the way. The next one that I have honestly been using the most, and this is right, the most, is actually Forendil and Bakshi. Back or Bakshi Forendil, should I say? I love Bakshi Forendil. This match is scarily good. Because Bakshi is basically the commander that we was kind of talking about with the Kanara on Madeline instance, where they're a very tanky, they're trying to do stuff. The fact that you gain 20% HP, you also gain 10% HP bonus from basic stats. You also can have a nice little small rage um, accumulation speed, um, which is very powerful for this build, but this small healing, right? So all of these little bits actually add up into tank effectiveness for Bakshi. And when you're using Bakshi, and I run, as you can still see, the same build as I have always recommended on him, where it's very skill base heavy, but you mitigate HP, as well as going now into the cavalry section to then get the perfect ferocity for the secondary hero. When you've got Bakshi and Forendil, it's a match made in heaven. You hit them with a massive nuke, you then get tankier. The Forendil then hits them even harder because of the 1200 and the skill tree that empowers him even further. And then guess what? Because you've now reduced their um, normal attack damage for um, basically cutting it off by 100% um, for three seconds, it just makes you super tanky. And this is all the offensive capabilities, especially if you're in the secondary slot, because you now get this skill from Bakshi as a 950 rage accumulator, meaning you will get it a turn earlier. Honestly, you will always get this a turn earlier compared to your opponents, especially with the build that I run. So I really, really like this build. And obviously, as you can imagine, this is only for ground-based units. But as we're gonna just showcase quickly, it's so goddamn good when you're trying to just use it to kite enemies. Because when you've got Bakshi here with the foreign deal, you can even use obviously the Cloak of Stealth. I've been fighting, so we've only got 100k troops. We do apologize for that. But the whole premise of this match is being able to happily start fighting, for example, an infantry or um, a, another cavalry-based unit that's 
obviously melee, and when they start walking towards you, you can just immediately just keep doing this, and as you can see, the rage accumulation speed is absolutely brutal. Even, like, the fact that he's trying to get closer, look, and he's never getting close enough, and I can just keep turning, I can keep dealing this damage, and guess what, I'm going to let him turn on me now, but he's already losing the fight, and that's the beauty of this match, right? And that is the power of it, especially with the ranged cavalry of the Spring Wardens. So I really do like this. Honestly, it's a very powerful build. I can imagine for Bakshi Forendale when you're using either the Knights or even the Wolf Riders, it's going to be packing such a heavy punch because it has that massive 300 plus attack power, right? So just look out for this. It's going to be something that a lot of people use. I've also tried and I want a whale, maybe in the comments could maybe help justify it, but Emrys Forendale, this match is just DPS city. That's what this is. This is all damage. If you want to absolutely melt someone, especially if you're a cavalry main and you somehow later down the line, you know, through gold chests, through all that, You've got Emrys expertise. This hero, whether foreign or behind him, is not even fair. The amount of rage accumulation speed you get because the Watcher's Blade and the Spring Blade combo allows you to keep nuking this 1500 damage with the bonuses of the 10% damage dealt. You can obviously have foreign or as the primary hero here, which is amazing because you also get another 10%. So with this combo, it's obviously Forendal primary with the Emrys behind him doing all the raging, all the rage accumulation speed because of just how good it is. And then once you've got that, guess what? You're cooking, you're straight cooking, right? Um, for another flying march, just to finish things off, I haven't forgotten about you guys. You can do Forendal with Frega. I have actually really liked this march. It's really good. Just the fact that it does give your normal attacks crit. And the fact that you get this on the Legion, meaning your normal attacks and defenses are really good. As well as the third skill. The third skill is a Legion based skill, meaning for Cavalry this also works. So the only thing you're really losing out, which is part of the power of Fregar, is that critical damage bonus. But for flying and maybe you don't have a good fear and maybe you want to try it out this is also a really good alternative i've been enjoying this match the rage accumulation reduction against your opponent is very good it's very very good especially if you put frega in the primary slot and then you put the forendel in the secondary it means you get that 50 rage accumulation reduction on your skill meaning guess what you slow them down yours costs less you should then in turn always hit your skills faster than them so really good combo there for foreign deal. that's all the pairings that honestly i think you're going to be needing with him i've not really liked alistair i've not liked hosk and i've not really enjoyed either craig too but i will say craig is an okay substitute if you don't have frega right it's fine so artifacts though artifacts that is the one thing that everyone wants to know about as well what do you run on Forendal? And honestly, I've been now using Kingslayer. I have unlocked it. I've got it four stars now. It's only at level one on the skill, but obviously if I can get it up to at least like a level two or a level three, that would be a really good amount of damage, 2600 to work with, as well as the amazing execute when someone is below 10%, right? It's very powerful. It means as a flying march, you can run in right near the end when someone's about to die hit them with all your new get them into the red and king slayer swipe and hopefully kill them as well as anyone around potentially that the murder ball is doing damage to you right so you can come in and pick off targets very fast with this or another one that i obviously should always have mentioned that you guys could always be using is spring blade right Spring Blades is just, I think, the, one of the best cavalry weapons in the game. It's, if not the best one, right? Because you can f get in, you can start dealing damage, you can get Spring Blades instantly from that Unyielding Rush, triggering, getting all the rage for your march. And then you can just unload. And as soon as you unload, you can be running. And this artifact, as you know, 
can be stuck in place dealing 750, 750, 750, and then as you've run away, guess what? 3,000's coming back through all the enemies that it's coming back out of. So, really love it. This is one you should always use. Another one that you could always be using is Blink or the Storm Arrows. Um, this is one of the ones that everyone hates people to put on. I'm not going to lie. If you, I use it a lot as well. Basically, it just means if you're a flying cavalry march with Blink, you should never get caught. Like, you, your whole intention with the Storm Arrow is to go behind enemy lines, take very long routes with the flying advantage over mountains, and farm kill, and then blink out of position so people can't get to you, and if you get targeted. Or, a really good one is even go in, do all the damage, and then blink instantly out, which actually pulls the enemies to you, because obviously you're pulling them out of their own range while they're still targeting you. So again, actually a really effective um, bit of kit here for the cavalry unit. So that's all of the info you're going to need. That is the skills, that is your, uh, um, your pairings, and your artifacts. So let's do the nitty gritty, the in-depth bit that you guys actually love about the channel as well. All of the talent pages. So I'm going to give you, hopefully, two talent pages to work from. One that I've been using personally all the time right now. And then what I think is one of the other really good and potentially better actual um, talent sheets that you could be running on your foreign deal and it will be used throughout your PvP campaign. And welcome back. This is the talent pages that I'm going to be running. We've got two that we're going to be going over as you can see. Basically very similar but I have honestly some very key differences on these builds. So the first one that I've been personally rocking, this is the one I've been using first is this page. This is basically a cavalry and a control page and what I have done personally was go down the control tree first and the one thing I will admit that I kind of regret doing is put this one point in blind side and the only reason why I do regret putting it in here is because I could have put it in intimidation or put it in somewhere else which we'll talk about later because honestly you only need soul siphon this head held high as well as the damage increase here with the movement speed from the control tree that's all you're looking for here because you are going to be going in and getting out of fight so the amount of rage that you can actually steal with a cavalry unit is actually very quite insane so I've been enjoying this. Obviously, you know you're going to get unyielding rush, but there's certain times and certain, you know, when you've got it on cooldown that you're not going to have it. And this will supplement the time when you don't have it up. But this is when we go into the cavalry. And what I did after, as you can imagine, we went control, got soul siphon, and then we started instantly going into this cavalry side. And this cavalry side is all about, and this whole tree is trying to max them out, is about damage and being able to harass. That's the whole very principle of it. But it was doing a very good job with skill damage. So that's a really cool thing about it. So you'll see we've got really good cavalry march speed here with an attack increase and then just a flat skill damage increase with perfect ferocity, meaning whoever is in back behind us. So this could be the Emrys, this could be even our um, back sheet if you're going to try it with the back sheet or even the Frega. Um, it wouldn't really go be good with the fear and that's what the other PvP skill page is going to be for mainly but this allows you to obviously increase the amount of damage you deal it's really good so you can try it right I, and I do like it it's really good um, but then you've got maximum counter tactics right so you've got legion cavalry units deal 5% more damage to maximum units. This is just what I've been picking. It allows me to honestly go in and I like it. A 5% damage debuff. This is really good too. The attack I wouldn't go for in the Wazila because you're reducing your defense. And the thing is with Cavs, they are a little bit squishy even though they've got all that max speed, right? So I would go for one of these two. I went for the damage and that's my whole damage reasoning for the build. And then we went for what I think is the way you always should build the cavalry tree now and honestly i need to always give props to purvis sage for this because i really do and i've really fallen in love with this build where you put two points into quick escape me meaning whenever you go into battle especially with ranged cavalry this is really good with and obviously with the flying calves 
when you go in and do your damage when you go to leave that is actually ending battle meaning you get a quick escape and you will get an eight percent march speed recovery which is really really good and it just gets you out of situations and it basically allows you to have this trample so anytime you defeat an enemy legion you're gonna get three percent extra attack so again you could be kiting someone and then you could go in finish a kill you get this three percent increase and that's when you switch targets and then you go in and maybe unyielding rush or if you're using spring wardens you're gonna have that extra attack at the start of combat so it's a really very really powerful combo here where you can get in and out and constantly be fighting people um, for basically advantages in your favor. So I really do like this strategy here of basically movement. It's all about movement as you can imagine. Then when you have these two, this skill set up or combo set up, you have to take triumphant return because again, anytime you have, um, end the battle, guess what? You got a healing factor of 200 troops. And the amount of times you can be going in and out, in and out, and you might be taking three, four, five hundred damage from just the counter attack damage. Guess what? You're going to be healing that back up, so you won't even feel like you've actually taken any damage. And this is very powerful when you're just going in and out, in and out, and comboing and kiting different types of units. Then we finish off with Blood Mark, as you can imagine, just dealing extra damage when we cast our Rage Skill. Really, really good little combo there. And this is what we've been using currently on our Forendale. But, this is the big but. I honestly think there's a better build and that's what this build is. This build is absolutely disgustingly good for the exact same reason I've just stated, but better right so the the control tree as you can notice we've changed it a tiny bit right we've got basically the, the same focus on what we want but we don't end in this area at all and what i've opted for as you can imagine is march speed with the defense of basically not taking as much normal attack damage and also not taking skill damage because the thing is with cavalry we are going to be running into the fight and we're going to be kiting in the fights as well depending again if you're using the ranged cavalry unit and because you're going to be doing in and out combat quite often you do get focused a lot and honestly reducing the amount of skill damage that you take is massive because mage players archer players could have had a rage cycle ready and just go to unload it on you guess what you've just made that a little bit better in your situation and again people targeting you as you run at them is always common so you always want to get normal normal less damage taken because it's just naturally that you're going to reduce that right from here same reason we keep soul siphon just to steal when we're running in and out of combat right but now we go into the pvp realm and this is where i'm telling you this is where things go crazy it's again very damage oriented here because we kind of have a lot more tanking capability from this side and i actually really do like it um we do lose out on the healing, which is fine, but we get a better healing situation later on anyway. So we have natural attack and then even more march speed. Yes, march speed is going to be king over these two talents, especially for the cavalry units, because when you're using your um, flying cavalry units or if you're using even the ranged cavalry units, you now have a 10, 20 and including your balanced heart that's 25 percent march speed bonus guys and the thing is the reason why we don't take any of these skills is even in the past you guys know i really do like taking one point into these skills it's because we don't have backstabber right so balanced heart is our skill and there's no reason for us to waste one point on obviously slowing down the target which is nice but this 6% march speed slow doesn't do anything for us because if you compare the control tree to like Valen's, Valen gets backstabber, which means whenever you debuff them, you deal more damage. So here we just have flat march speed as well as attacks. So that's why we don't need to waste that talent point. So here, 25% march speed we've gained already in the build. And that is absurd, just absurd when you think about it. 
Then what we do is the same as before, but we've got 5% instead of four. So we've gained 1% already on our hero skill damage, meaning we're gonna hit even harder. And then, as you can imagine, increase the damage dealt by your Legion while it's in battle, 1% every 10 seconds to a maximum of three. This is good, again, we can hit them really hard instantly for 1% extra, but after the next turn and we've got the rage cycling bar back up so we've done two at least you know rage cycles uh, we're gonna have three percent extra damage so i really do like that you could and i mean it you could take this to reduce all damage taken this is a very powerful skill too i'm gonna test which one i prefer in the next season but i am gonna be running this build more this build has been really good for me so far but we're going to be running Army of Valor for now. That's what I'm going to recommend. It's just what I've been using. It's just the damage is just absurd, especially when you use it in Roots of War. That's how we've been testing a lot more when we've been looking at the damage numbers, right? From here, War Banner. War Banner is just a flat damage increase. I would understand if you want to take even more match speed, but I think this is a little bit of an overkill because of the one point which we put later on. So we put five points into War Banner, we put five points into Strength to Strength to increase the overall damage dealt. And then, as you can imagine, Grand's Healing whenever we defeat an enemy by 300. So we get, again, some really good healing here for killing our enemies and doing the task of picking apart or kiting it with the ranged cavalry and killing units with that so i really do like this and then finally blessings of fury whenever we cast the rage skill we get our hp and as i said we had one point left and we didn't waste it and we didn't put it in here we actually put it in the avoidance i really like this skill for one point you will gain four percent march speed and this is whenever you take skill damage which is often so if someone hits you and they're trying to slow you down and they're trying to stop you from getting to them guess what you're going to negate that by four percent at least because you're going to get a four percent march speed increase so you can imagine here you've got 25 percent built into your talents going up to 29 percent march speed into your talents and that's when you get hit by a obviously skill you also have another six percent here which i've also forgotten about so i do apologize so in total you got 31 percent going all the way up to 35 percent extra march speed in certain scenarios allowing you to obviously if you use this guy as a primary hit up to 45 percent march speed or if he's not obviously you're not going to be using him those talents won't be obviously used as a deputy but again when you're primary, you're getting an insane amount of march speed, guys. And that's why I really like that build in the secondary tree. So this is, again, the tree I've been using currently. It's a really good tree still. It allows you to use the ranged cavalry way more effectively because of this combo. But if you're trying to be more of a cavalry player with normal melee-based cavalry or flying calves for that matter, guess what? I would honestly recommend this page. It's so strong. It's so good, especially with the primary Forundel in your setup. So that is it. That is the talent pages we're going to be going over. I hope you've enjoyed it. It's all time stamped, guys, again. So you can go over through any of the sections on here for this hero guide. And guess what? We've only got Theodore left to do now, and we've done all of the heroes in Call of Dragons. That is all the season one heroes for you guys so i hope you guys have enjoyed it as well as my guys on cover dragons heroes i hope they've helped you get better and hopefully excel in pvp and if you've learned something today guess what smash like comment and subscribe for more daily educational videos from me mr sneaky an official call of dragons content creator that brings you videos that is either pvp guides just anything call of dragons content created guess what i've got it i'm trying to make it fun make you entertained and hopefully get your sub and like and support for the future so thank you for watching thank you for the support and thank you for all of you guys that make it all the way to the end until the next video though stay safe stay sneaky and peace out everyone